logarithmic functions and their graphs. In our last section, we learned that transcendental functions are non-algebraic functions, including exponential and logarithmic functions. We dove deep into exponential functions in our last section, and this section's all about logarithmic functions. So a logarithmic function is a function f with a base a is denoted by f of x is equal to log base a of x. A couple of things about logarithmic functions. Um, the base of a has to not to be equal to 1 and to be greater than 0. The value of x has to be greater than 0 which means you cannot take the logarithm of a negative value. And very important that log base a of x is equal to y is equivalent to x is equal to a to the yth power. So before we look at these um, three questions I'm going to go through with you, let's just examine the relationship between logarithmic and exponential functions. So if we have log base a of x is equal to y, if I have a logarithmic function, I can very easily turn it into an exponential function by saying a to the y is equal to x. I call it the swirly method, but I'm sure it's got some very you know, specific mathematical name that doesn't involve swirlies. Uh, in the same way, if I wanted to take a function of a to the y is equal to x and turn it into a logarithmic function, keep in mind that the base is always the base. So here the base was a um, and here the base is a. So the base of a logarithm and the base of an exponential function are the same. So if I were turning this into a logarithm, I would keep the base, log base a, and then of x is equal to y. So again, we're swirling. We're swirling in order to find um, how to rewrite. Let's take a look at the three questions that I have here, and we're just going to use exactly what we talked about in turning the logarithmic function into an exponential function and then simplifying. So for instance, we have 3 is equal to log base 2 of x. So I'm just going to rewrite it as 2 to the third power is equal to x. So again, we're swirling. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So we're saying log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Next question. Again, I'm just going to swirl. So a to the fifth power I should have put this on the other side. a to the fifth power is equal to 100,000. So I can just take the fifth root of each side and know that a is 10. Last question. I have 3 to the y is equal to 81. So 3 to what power is equal to 81? And this would be 3 to the 4th power. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So I did one of each, one where we're solving for x, one where we're solving for a, and one where we're solving for y. Your calculator can evaluate common logarithms. So you'll notice that a calculator will have a log button, but generally does not have a log button that lets you input the base. And therefore, those calculators only evaluate the common logarithm. So the common logarithm is a logarithm base 10. You'll know it's base 10 because you won't see a number written down there. It'll just say log of 32. Um, again, let's before we talk about change of base, let's talk about how to find the log of 32. Now again, keep in mind that this is basically saying 10 to what power is 32? So it makes perfect sense that my answer to this question is going to be a decimal. So I'm just going to type log 32 and notice it finds that solution for me. For my second question, it says log 
base 10 of 10. Well, hopefully we remember that 10 to the first power would be equal to 10. So again, we're saying 10 to what power is equal to 10? And we know it's 10 because there's no base written. And again, we should get an answer of one. Now for my third question, log base four of 16, I can't find log base four of 16. Now, first of all, I can find that solution without a calculator. I can say four to what power is 16, and I know four squared is 16. So I know the solution is two. But let's say I needed to use my calculator, or I, I wasn't quite thinking clearly, and I couldn't figure out log base four of 16. Then I can use the change of base formula that says, if you have a base other than 10, you can find the log of the value and divide it by the log of the base. And notice it did give us a value of two, just as we knew it would. Now for the last one, I did throw this one in here just to make sure we understand that we cannot find the log of a negative number. So the domain of a log function is that x has to be greater than or equal, I'm sorry, just greater than zero. So it cannot be zero and it cannot be negative. Let's take a look at a few properties of logarithms. So the first tells us that log base a of one is equal to zero. Again, we're just swirling. We're saying a to the zero is equal to one. So seven to the what is equal to one? Seven to the zero is equal to one. The next property says log base a of a is equal to one. Again, we're just swirling. a to the first power is equal to a. So 10, remember there's no base here, so that's 10. 10 to what power is equal to 10? That's 10 to the first. 10 to the first is equal to 10. The next property, log base a of a to the x is equal to x. So essentially what happens for this first one is whenever you have an exponent, you can move that out to the front. And then log base a of a is an inverse. This is called the inverse property. And so that cancels to one. So this would be one times x because the exponent moves to the front. Uh, same inverse property says a to the log base a of x is equal to x. So again, a and log base a, so a to the power of log base a, those are inverses as well, and so we end up with x. So here, if we have log base 4 of 4 to the third, again, that 3 would move to the front. Log base 4 of 4 is 1, so my answer is 3. And lastly, we have the one-to-one -one property that says if log base a of x is equal to log base a of y, then x must be equal to y, which of course tells us that the graph is one-to-one -one and would pass the horizontal line test and so forth. So log base two of x squared is equal to log base two of nine. So this is x squared is equal to nine is how I could use that property. And then x is equal to the square root of nine, which is three. Notice I'm not going to put plus or minus three because we can't take the log of a negative value. Let's take a look now at the graphs of logarithmic functions. So the graph of a logarithmic function uh, in the form y equals log base a of x has the following properties. And notice I'm just graphing y is equal to log base 10 of x. So there's no log there, so I'm just doing log base 10 of x. Um, but it would be the same if a were some other value. The domain is 0 to infinity, so notice nothing to the left of the y-axis. The range is all real numbers. Again, we can see from negative infinity to positive infinity. The x-intercept is y is equal I'm sorry, x is equal to 1, so 1 comma 0. And it's increasing from 0 to infinity, so over its entire domain. It has an asymptote at x equals 0, which would just be straight up and down. It's continuous over its entire domain, and it's 1 to 1. And look at this. It has an inverse of y is equal to a 
to the x power. So I'm going to use y is equal to 10x, and I want you to take a look at those two graphs. I'm going to get rid of this one. And we can see that these do appear to be inverses of one another. And how do I know that? Remember, inverses reflect across the line y equals x. And let's change the color of that one. And we can see that we do have two graphs that are inverses of one another. And the fact that it was one to one means it does have an inverse and the inverse is, so the inverse of the logarithmic function is the exponential function and vice versa. Uh, keep in mind that you can on any of these um, logarithmic graphs, just as we did with exponential graphs, you can shift the graph up, down, right, left, and so forth. I could say log of 3x. So all of those things are still going to, to apply in the same way that we did before. The natural logarithmic function. Just as we did with the natural exponential function, we're going to examine the natural logarithmic function. And that just means that the base of the logarithm is e. So log base e of x is equivalent to writing the natural log of x. Again, x has to be greater than 0. So I can look at the graph of y equals log of x, which is what we were just looking at in our last part of our video, um, which is just the common log function. And now I'm just taking the natural log of x or log base e of x. So I'm changing that base. And notice it's the same curve, it's just um, a little bit taller. So perhaps squished against the x-axis, I'm sorry, the y-axis a bit more. Um, we can use our calculator to evaluate, so I can find the natural log of 2. I can find the natural log of 0 0.2, which is fine because, again, those are both greater than 0. But if I try to find the natural log of negative 2, I'm, again, going to run into a problem. We're going to take a look at one application question um, involving retention of material. So students participate in a psychology experiment. They attend several lectures on a subject and take an exam. Every month for a year after the exam, the students retake the exam to see how much of the material they remembered. So they have created a natural logarithmic model using those values. And again, we could, if we had data, come up with a natural logarithmic model just as we did with the linear regression model. Um, but they have already done that for us and they said here's the function f of t where t is the time in months after um, the student has taken the exam is equal to 75 minus 6 times the natural log of t plus 1 for 0 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 12 so from 0 to 12 months so we can see um, this you can see a very small portion of the graph but it would basically go to 12. But let's move back to this side for a moment. And the first question says, what was the average score on the original exam? So I can see by looking at the graph that a point 0, 0,75 is on the graph. So really what we're saying is the average score on the original exam or the average score at time 0 months after the original exam. And I could also say f of 0 so that it could calculate it for me. So I can either look at the graph or have it calculated for me. The second question says, what was the average score at the end of six months? So again, if I wanted to scroll over to six months and try to look for a number here, I could do that. But it makes much more sense to do f of six. And again, it's going to give me that same value, six and then 63.32, etc. And you don't have to worry about trying to have a steady hand. Up next, we're going to take a look at the properties of logarithms.